Hey guys, Chris here with work to game and today I'd like to talk about where do you play 40k? Um, there's a lot of questions about how do I get time, where do I play, and I think sometimes it causes newer players to get disengaged from the hobby, it causes older players to kind of fall through the cracks, and so I think there's a couple of concepts. The first is find a community. I guarantee in whatever major city you are, there is some form of community. It may not be the one that you're looking for. So hopefully, I'm in DFW, it's a huge area. So there's many stores to choose from so you can find the right fit for you. But the other thing is that you can go to forums and you can find local players that maybe run things through Facebook groups or, or through email. And so you can try to line up games and so that is wonderful. Um, that kind of makes me want to segue off into pay where you play. So if you do play at a shop, um, unless they're just price gouging you, you should really do your best to try to support that shop as you buy models um, because they're providing that space. They're providing that culture, that, that bucket where you can meet people and you can enjoy games with them and they're hopefully providing some tables, maybe some scenery. Um, they might have snacks and so it's this whole environment and that brick and mortar costs money. So without getting just totally derailed off topic, Pay where you play. Um, my store does, you know, they have a, a slight discount off of all GW prices as online. So it's enough that it kind of encourages you to say, okay, I know there's other discount retailers out there, but I, I'd really prefer to give it to them. Um, and so it makes me very comfortable giving that money to my store. And I, I understand that certain cities, you have stores that actually mark things up over GW online prices, and that's a little harder because it's already, it can be an expensive hobby, especially depending on what you're trying to buy. And so I, I understand that, that issue. But as long as your store is working with you, they're making the effort, they're providing a good space, do your best to support them. So that topic, way off topic, let's talk about how you can just play. Um, if you're just getting started, don't worry about table size. Yes, the rule book has suggested table sizes. Most people right now are spending the majority of their time playing 1850 to 2000 point games, which should be played on a four foot by six foot space. So if you're not willing to play that down on the floor, most people don't have a table that's four feet wide. Most people don't have a table that's six feet long. And so I actually built my first table. It's nothing horribly some, you know, amazing craftsman and you should make a video where it's like these wonderful woodworkers like Frank Howarth or anything like that. But it it does its job. And so what I did is I went and I actually bought, um, I don't have a table saw. And so I went and bought just what's called craft panels and they are two foot by four foot pieces of plywood just from your local home improvement store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. And uh, originally I was going to cut them down and I was gonna have two foot by three foot pieces and I was going to put them together and that makes four by six. And then I realized it's gonna be a pain to cut them and actually because my house has room for four foot by eight foot table, I would prefer it to be the full size of these panels so that you have that extra foot on each side for reserve troops and your book and your drink and your snacks and whatever so they're not on the battlefield. Somewhere to roll your dice, somewhere to set your tape. Um, that way you're not sitting on the floor and it's it's awesome. Um, the side benefit is actually I had a chance to play an APOC game here uh, I guess like a week ago and it just worked out that way. There was four of us there, we all wanted to play so we played 2v2 and actually with 4,000 points a 4x8 table is the recommended size. So it worked out convenient and all I did is I attached a 1x3 to the bottom of that with just some L brackets, nice little short screws. It was right around like $100 at my you know my home improvement store. I actually sold off the um, the Marines that are here in these Dark Imperium sets, and that amount of money went off and paid for the table, so it worked out great. And uh, and then I actually used little luggage clips. Um, don't think I have any extras around, you know, that, that kind of latch over, and I attach those to each of the corner the the joints, so the whole thing kind of pulls itself together. I have some long-term plans on how I want to continue to modify this and build on this and make it something really cool and really something to be proud of, and if it ever gets to that point, I will absolutely share it with you guys, but that's what I play on. Some people play on dining room tables, some people play on poker tables or pool tables, ping pong tables. Um, four foot by six foot is ideal. 
And if you're going to be playing this hobby long term, the person with the biggest house, it would be great if they could work on that. I made mine disassemble, and so right now these panels all attach together and then sit on top of my dining room table. And so that's really great. If it is going to scratch the surface, go ahead and lay down like a beach towel or something, kind of protect it. Um, and then we actually had some weights that ended up kind of acting as terrain to kind of hold it down because it overhangs so much off the table that it's resting on um, until I get some better legs that will also be mobile. Um, and then think about the space you're using it in. Um, most of the time, to keep people from bumping it, you want at least 24 inches of clearance on all four sides. So if the table is going to be eight feet long, that means that you need a room that's 12 feet long or is 10 feet long and you're gonna push it all the way against the wall. And then on those big sides where you're spending most of your time, it'd be really nice to have a good three, if not four feet. So it's already four feet wide. It, we played in one of my bedrooms that's empty. We just don't use it for anything right now. We had a friend that was living there and it's 10 foot by 10 foot and the whole room felt like it was being used with four guys in there. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the benefits of playing in a shop. Um, so if you can play in a shop, that's great. Then the question becomes, how do you transport your army? And that's once again, another rabbit hole to dive down. So I would really say just focus on playing where you can. If you have a table that's only two foot by four foot, Play with 750 points, play with something smaller, try it out. If you are getting into bigger point games, you're starting to try to build towards tournament lists, you're starting to try to really experience the hobby as a whole, then maybe do something like I did where you kind of just put it together on Saturday morning before everybody shows up, you play your two or three games, and you take the whole thing down. Um, it's really no big deal, and honestly, $100 in the big scheme of things. I'm actually looking for ways to, now that I kind of have my rough one built and functioning, I've been looking at ways where maybe I can felt it and things like that. So it can be used as a more traditional board game table. Um, you know, maybe use it for like puzzles when my family comes into town. We're big on those and games like Scrabble and Monopoly with a lot of people. Um, and so, you know, how can I make it more of a space to be gathered around? Um, that'd be kind of nice. And so it'd be nice if you know, or I can put a tablecloth over it and have it as like a buffet table when we have lots of people over and have food out on it and stuff. So how do I make it function for more things? Keeping in mind that the core dimensions are set to what I need. I would not go wider than four feet because you have to think about reach, especially when you talk about terrain and all that. So as people try to get over and measure that one inch and see if he made the charge, you don't want everything to get broken. You don't want everything to get bumped. And so I would try to keep it at the four feet. Um, that's why APOC games a lot of times are played with four feet and then that long dimension just gets longer and longer and longer. Um, and then I really wouldn't go longer than eight, maybe 10 feet at the most. I would try to keep it really close to that four by six, four by eight range. Um, I think that's something that's manageable. Mine comes apart. You could take those and put them in, you could hinge them so that they, they transport in cars kind of as pieces. Um, mine stay as four separate pieces. And so I'm thinking about kind of building a rack actually on the wall right behind this computer that they kind of drop into and they just kind of layer because each one has a support around just its outside edge. So you kind of have an L and then those other two are, there is no support. So they should just kind of stack on top of each other. Um, and so it's not magic. Mine is not something that I'm horribly like awestruck by, but it's wonderful to play on. It's just plywood. Um, I'd like to start maybe moving towards scenery, maybe get a battle mat. There's all of these cool things that you can build on, but it's just like every other part of this hobby. Start small, add on. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. There's a few areas where I feel differently about that, and that's things like cases and stuff like that where you really lose your full investment and so you kind of want to get it right the first time but with the majority of this hobby you can start small and just keep modifying so if i want to make the tops felt i pull them apart i maybe you know take a round over bit with my router on the outside wrap them in felt you know maybe put a pad on there screw them right back together we're off to the races Maybe the outside rails get replaced eventually. And so maybe one day there's an iteration where no part of the table now is still there, but that day is not today. And I can still enjoy a lot of games on it exactly as it sits. When my brothers come in town this month for Thanksgiving, next month for Christmas, uh, I'm trying to talk them into coming up once every six to eight weeks because we do live all over Texas. Um, and so now that we have a guest room that's finishing up, I'm trying to 
get them to come to town. And the question is, where do you play? You can find a shop. And honestly, the best thing to do when you're locating a shop is go on a night. Don't take your army. Grab, you know, Wendy's or something like that. Come in with your, your drink. Sit around. Talk. Chat. Watch. Be polite. And just get a feel for the community. Ask questions. What nights are best to play? Sometimes you can call ahead on that so you can make sure that the night you're visiting is the right night. And get a feel for the atmosphere and make sure it fits you. So much of this hobby is about finding the army that fits you, finding the, the painting and level of hobbying that fits you, finding the game style that fits you, finding the place that fits you. And once you find all of those things, this is an incredible hobby. Like D&D, if you're not enjoying it, you're probably not doing it with the right people. I think it can be enjoyed by just about everybody. Um, so that is my long-winded way of saying play where you can. And if they have two options of where to play, play in the place that fits you best. Um, hopefully we all have many places to play. I can play at my shop on Tuesdays. I could go there for tournaments on Saturdays. I can play with my brothers or my friends in, in the DFW area anytime when I want to put this table together. And that's a lot of options for me to get games in. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you're having a great week. Let me know in the comments section below where you like to play, um, maybe areas that have worked out for you in the past, things you've tried that you feel could have been better. Um, maybe playing on the floor you feel hurts your back, but you found a way to get around that. And, and definitely let us know. Um, you guys have a wonderful week. Keep working on your list. Definitely post links below if you've got anything new and painted. I love to see that. I love to see especially conversion. Conversion is so cool because um, I can't have seen it before. It's unique to you. Um, so I will see you next time. This has been Chris with work to game and uh, take care. Hey guys, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video and we hope to see you on our next. Is there uh, <laughs> anywhere you think they could see us in the meantime? Well, right now you probably can catch us out on Twitch. We usually stream quite a lot, so uh, the link is in the description below for our Twitch page. And if you guys want to support us and you like what we do here on uh, YouTube, you can actually support us for free by using your Twitch Prime sub if you're Amazon Prime.